this is an example of a dress that's image that's in the exhibit, but I wanted to show you some detailed shots of it so that you could see the printing on this uh, flower sack that was used, but every bit of this dress is made from a flower sack. Uh, so the color uh, is likely dyed, hand dyed using uh, ground Osage orange or perhaps walnut, depending upon the mordant that was used. Uh, that was used to help set the dye. But if you'll notice, all of those stitches are done by hand and the thread is the thick coarse thread that was used to sew the sack together. So it's a beautiful example. So if you get a chance to go into the exhibit, they fixed it so that you can sort of try this piece on. And uh, so, and here's a close up of the front so you can kind of see how it was put together. And, but that's from 1870. And the sack was from Council Grove, Kansas. And uh, these are examples of two of the booklets that were out there for uh, uh, women to use uh, uh, when making things for their home or for their families. Uh, the one on the left, A Bag of Tricks, is from uh, 1945. The Make and Mend, it was uh, printed during uh, the war, uh, excuse me, World War II. But within them, they have great fun ideas. So if you ever come across one of these uh, in an antique store, perhaps in your family's collection, uh, there's some really fun ideas on how to, to repurpose and mend and things like that. There, one of these has even tells you how to darn stockings and socks. Uh, so I thought I'd share a few of the photos of those, but here's some of the ideas. Uh, but they would give you pattern numbers for some uh, ready-made patterns that were out there and available. And then it would tell you how many sacks that you would need uh, to be able to make that particular style. But these were used as promotions. Um, one was the Cotton Council. I think the other one's by a thread company. Uh, but making things for baby, for toys, for your uh, tea towels, uh, to and your children. So lots of good ideas. But this particular dress uh, is not in the exhibit, There's an, but there is another one that is, and it had, was made by the same person. Uh, but this uh, is an example of a feed sack made dress. And so I'm kind of giving you an image uh, of the dress. And because it's a busy, busy print, you don't get to see all of the fine details of where the, some of the telltale marks of where the feed sack stitching is. But I thought on the inside of this dress, along that seam line, you can see where those needle holes are. That's the original stitch line using that chain stitch. And so they, it's sort of like it needle punched it. And they're, pretty permanent in within that fabric. And so it was the job of the seamstress to try to find ways to, to disguise those as best they can. Uh, so this particular dress has pockets and uh, you can find some of the holes that are on the backside of the fold of the pocket facing and within the, uh, the front opening, the front placket, you can find them. But this particular one at the waistband was the, the best example of seeing those needle holes it, to confirm for sure that this was a feed sack print. Uh, this is an example of uh, underwear that might have been made out of a feed sack. I don't know the story of this one, but these, this pair I do. Uh, this is uh, Velma was learning to sew. I'm gonna tell you a story. And Velma made for her sister Nelda a pair of bloomers or underwear. The fabrics available to her were provided by trips to town with her father to select feed sacks and prints she liked. The family raised chickens and buying several 100 pound sacks at a time was necessary. Wearing bloomers made from plain feed sacks was a common practice as families stretched clothing budgets. 
getting the mill logo that had been printed onto the cloth out was a challenging process. The slight remnants of the clover logo can be seen on the right half, or excuse me, the left half of the bloomers. And according to Velma, the bloomers were likely made of chicken feed sacks the family bought at the local feed mill. And the bloomers were recently donated, donated to the Historic Costume and Textile Museum. So this is an, an image of, uh, on the left of Nelda. She was the youngest of six and the family raised, uh, lived on a farm and raised chickens during the Great Depression in the Dust Bowl stricken days, uh, excuse me, Dust Bowl stricken areas of the Midwest. And then over there is uh, Velma and, and Nelda with the cat. So this is a photo of Velma and you can see she's a little older in this photo and it's from 1938. And uh, I actually was able to speak with Velma recently. And uh, so she was shared these images of her and her 4-H sewing entries for the county fair. And uh, the dresses she had sewn were made from feed sacks. And Velma was mostly self-taught to sew, but she did have help using patterns from an older sister, Edith. So oh, this is clothing that's uh, in the exhibit. And this is clothing that was made for Janet Reed, well, Janet Smith by her grandmother. Uh, and so it's a little romper with a, uh, with a bonnet. And then there's another bonnet uh, over there as well. And they're just charming. These feed sack prints are the cutest thing. And her grandmother was so talented. Oh, hmm. Uh, and these were all made by the grandmother as well. Uh, so the bias binding is typical for the time period and was featured in many of those uh, brochures that I was showing you earlier. Uh, the one on the left and the on the right are both uh, for adults. And then the one in the middle is was made for Janet. Uh, it's a smaller size, but all from feed sacks. And even this is a more contemporary piece and perhaps some of you in the audience might recognize the style, but this is probably dates to that late 1960s, early 70s uh, time period because of the bell bottom pants. Uh, but if you look closely at the graphics that are on that one uh, pants suit, that's feed sack labels. And so it was a, became a, a fashion trend to recycle that idea of feed sacks and those logos uh, during that time. So this is a close-up of that uh, bag of tricks. So looking now at finding some creative solutions that they did for the household. Uh, this is a quilt in the exhibit. This was a uh, donated by Dick uh, was made by, uh, it's a family quilt and it's just beautiful. All of these flowers are made from different feed sacks. Uh, all the little uh, containers where the uh, flowers are based are all made out of plaid and the others are all prints. And it's just a really charming applique quilt. And this is another one. Uh, that was sewn by Janet's grandmother, uh, Sevilla Smith Frischer, and great aunt Eva Norfleet, and perhaps a maternal grandmother, Catherine Geyer Bowen. And this was made from feed sacks and using both solids and prints. And uh, what's interesting about this is the face of the quilt, and this is the back of the quilt which is made with these border print sacks. And you only get to see a little portion of this in the exhibit. So I wanted to be sure you all saw the full uh, back of the quilt. And then I've included a little drawing over here on the left, uh, but it was made from four 100 pound uh, sacks. And uh, then they, she had to use a strip of plain cloth down the middle to make it wide enough uh, for the quilt front and to go across the bed that she was putting it on. But uh, I think it's a really ingenious way because with the way that the uh, printed 
uh, looks, you don't even notice that there's any plain fabric in the middle. But there's that little cherry print that I, we saw in the 1939 print of the man in the warehouse with the sacks. Uh, this is a fun sack because it, this is a border print. So this would be what it the back of the quilt that we just saw with the border prints. This is what a sack would have looked like uh, based on that same concept. Uh, and so the image over on the right from the uh, trade publication kind of would stimulate ideas for uh, seamstresses to use to create things for their home. And so this smaller image is a placemat that one of the grandmothers or perhaps Janet might have embroidered herself with her name. And then over here is a feed sack or flower sack uh, that has, uh, would be either two long strips that could have been made into tea towels or it would have, you could have cut it to make four individual placemats. Uh, other ideas for things that feed sacks were used for in the home uh, are garment bags like this one. And this was uh, came to us from Marilyn Golly. Uh, and her uh, aunt had made this particular sack, uh, not sack, excuse me, this uh, garment bag from sacks uh, while she was a 4 H'er and she had entered this in her county fair. Uh, so this was made in the early 1930s by Sarah Ann Pence. And so I gave you a little detailed shot of some of her, <coughs> excuse me, stitching. Uh, so you can see that detail and it buttoned up the front. Uh, this is one of the uh, ideas that was included in that earlier previous slide. This is a shoe bag. And so this is uh, uh, what you could have put your, your shoes in if you were going to pack them and take them somewhere. And this is the back of that one sack that uh, I had shown you earlier with the embroidery on the back of it. Uh, this is in the exhibit. And if you can imagine, this particular feed sack is still sewn along the side. Now, uh, I think it's fun because uh, it's an unfinished project, but it was saved. And I can't imagine because the bottom of the bag is underneath where the embroidery is. And so that embroidery was done in a tunnel and why you wouldn't have opened that bag up to make doing that embroidery, I don't know, but it is what it is. And it's got a charming story now, but I, I unfortunately, I don't know who did the embroidery, but I think it's sweet. Uh, these are other things that you might see uh, either in your home or uh, at the antique store and they're highly collectible. Uh, and these are a collection of pot holders, pretty fun. Uh, this is two images. Now, the one uh, on the right is a clothespin bag. Uh, and uh, Well, they're both clothespin bags, but the one on the left is currently on Etsy. So you could still buy uh, things like this today. Uh, and I think that's pretty charming and pretty sweet. 